Hmm, looking for something slimy? Well, many people tend to believe that snails are just slugs with shells. But even though they look so similar, they're completely different species. Slugs don't need any protective shells, as all their internal organs are, well, internal, inside their slimy bodies. They can squish themselves and get into hard-to-reach places, which is why slugs can often be found in the most unlikely spaces, like under tree bark, or inside tiny crevices, or at the library pretending to study for exams. Snails, on the other hand, are tightly connected with their shells and can't survive without one. Unlike hermit crabs, which replace their shells as they grow, snails are born with a shell on their back. Baby snails look adorable with those fragile translucent bubbles that calcify and become bigger and tougher with age. Cute? Well, you be the judge. Many of the snail's internal organs are inside the shell too, meaning that if it gets crushed or damaged, well, the animal would probably not survive. Still, a snail can repair small scratches and cracks in the shell with the help of proteins and calcium secreted by its mantle. Now, turtles are very close to snails in this regard, by the way, because contrary to common myth, they can't leave their shell at a whim either. A turtle's shell is an integral part of its body, and despite the reptile being able to hide its head and paws inside to protect itself from predators, its skeleton is fused with the hard shell. And just like any other animal skeleton, it grows with the turtle itself. Now, koalas do only eat eucalyptus leaves, but there are over 600 different kinds of those. And koalas only munch on 30, or just 5% of what's available on the menu. So it has to be a very specific eucalyptus tree to make a good meal for a picky koala. These adorable creatures also have something in common with domestic cats. They sleep for 18 to 20 hours a day. Polar bears aren't at all white. Their skin is black under the fur. They need the white color to disguise themselves while on the hunt. The color black absorbs the sun better than any other, while white fur doesn't stop sunlight. Rays pass right through it. In a sense, a polar bear has transparent fur. There's a myth that dogs and cats see the world in black and white. In reality, they just can't distinguish some colors. Nobody knows how exactly dogs see. Some think they only distinguish two colors. Could be blue and yellow, for all we know. But they can see shades of other colors better than people. And cats have wonderful night vision. They need about seven times less light than a human to see in the dark. Now, giraffes were thought to be mute. But recently, it's been found that they make low-frequency sounds at night to communicate with each other. During the day, they don't say a word and warn each other of danger in a very unusual way by moving their well-developed eyebrows. It's likely that at night, it's difficult to see the eyebrows, so they start talking for real. While we're on the topic of giraffes, these animals sleep much more than 30 minutes a day, but probably not as much as you do. Their sleeping pattern is quite typical. After researchers monitored a herd of giraffes, they found out they slept at night and took short naps in the afternoon. In total, each giraffe had around 5 hours of sleep every day. Oh, and by the way, a herd of these guys is actually known as a tower of giraffes. Makes sense with the long necks. Seagulls can drink seawater. There are salt-secreting glands near their eyes. These glands purify seawater very quickly, and the salty residue comes out through the nostrils. Yep, you guessed it, salty snot. The Adelie penguins are real romantics. They only have one partner for life. The male must give a smooth stone to the female to create a family. You could say that's kind of an engagement ring. Like humans, though, a female penguin may refuse and not accept the ring. Hmm. Did you know that chickens can jump and fly too? Domestication of the chicken dates back to at least 2000 BCE. They do have the required feathers and muscles to fly, but they don't do it much anymore hundreds of years after they were domesticated. But if you give them the right motivation, they can do that. If they think the other side of the fence is cool, they can jump up to six feet. Some hens hop on the trees to roost. Picture a tree with a couple of chickens on it. Looks so funny. Their motivation is safety. The tree serves as a cover for them in the daytime and protects them from winged predators. Similarly, at night, the tree turns into a shelter from wind and rain and the possible attacks from ground predators. This doesn't have to be in the wild. 
farms where chickens can wander around freely also have tree nests. Some sneaky chickens leave their coop and jump onto the trees. So, many chicken owners search for ways to keep them under control. Hey Siri, search for how to deal with jumping chickens. I'm now moving on to everyday items and the secrets they help. The twist ties and plastic bags on bread packs don't have random colors. They are color-coded based on the daily bread baked. Each day of the week has an assigned color. For example, blue twist tie stands for Monday, green for Tuesday, and red for Thursday. Now you can figure out how fresh your bread is. Color codes are helpful for employees too. They can easily spot the old loaves on the shelves. There's a popular saying, you are what you eat. It turns out that our guts are also there to make us happy. Serotonin is the feel-good hormone. It's also a neurotransmitter. Many of us immediately associate it with our brains. Yet, interestingly, around 95% of the body's serotonin is produced in our digestive tract. Many of us often use the words herbs and spices interchangeably, but these are different seasonings. Spices come from every part of a plant or tree, like root, seed, or bark. But herbs are the plant's leaves. We generally add spice to food in roasting and during cooking. Herbs release their aroma faster, so we add them at the very end. Do you ever feel you've been watched and discovered that you're right? Well, that spider sense-like feeling is called gaze detection. Your brain senses when someone is staring at you. Research explains this as a sort of defense mechanism. A direct gaze can be a symbol of dominance and that can be a potential threat. Humans evolved with this feeling in time. Strangely, it works when the person looks right at you. If their gaze is off just a few degrees to the left or right of you, your brain won't react this way. What about the urge to re-watch your favorite movies or listen to your songs over and over? You're not alone. This habit has some benefits for your mental health. This behavior eases your mind. When people feel overwhelmed, they'll have less self-control and be less motivated to complete hard tasks. You are drawn into the office's first season again because when you watch, listen, or do something familiar, you don't have to spend the effort to monitor what you're thinking. So it's a good way to have a quick mental reset. Here's another feeling. Imagine you're enjoying the sunset on a terrace or at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Out of nowhere, your inner voice whispers, what if I jump? This isn't coming from a darker state. You know, it's just sort of a feeling that appears when you're high up. There is a name for this. The call of the void or the high place phenomenon is a relatively new research topic, but more studies are on the way. Jim Carrey's great performance in The Truman Show is surely remembered. Did you know that the Truman Show delusion is an actual thing? The phenomenon is an issue related to cognitive neuropsychiatry. People with this delusion believe that they're being filmed and that the footage will be broadcasted for entertainment. There was a time when aluminum was more precious than gold. I know, it's hard to believe. We now wrap our sandwiches on this everyday item. If we go back to the 19th century, we would see aluminum as a hard to get element because it was literally hard to obtain until innovators found a way to extract it on large industrial scales. Then the reign of aluminum was over. There are stories about the French ruler Napoleon III having an aluminum cutlery set that he served food to his special guests. The button on the top of your baseball cap is there purely for aesthetic purposes. By the way, this little thing has a name. Professionals call it a squatcho. Its initial function was to hold the four panels of the cap together. As hat making improved, the panels stopped needing it to hold together, and squatcho was removed. But hats didn't look the same without it. Soon after, the squatcho returned due to popular demand. Originally, high heeled shoes weren't intended for galas and proms. Back in the 10th century, horse riding was pretty tough with flat soled shoes, and many riders' feet would constantly fall out of the stirrups. Higher heels helped deal with that problem. The grip was much firmer with them, and they grew in popularity. It wasn't long before they became a fashion accessory to match stylish outfits. Notable people wouldn't want to be seen without them. Riding a horse with fancy heels was the equivalent of owning a luxurious sports car. Even though heels were worn mainly by men at the start, ladies picked up on the iconic trend in the 17th century. 
it's been one of the biggest ever since. In ancient Rome, salt was so precious that people even called it white gold. With scorching heat and no fridges, its purpose was to preserve food, mainly meat and fish. As a bonus, it made everything tastier. Sal, which is salt in Latin, was used instead of money to pay salaries. Here is where the word salary originated. Rice is the oldest cultivated food in human history. Its origins as wild grass started in a small valley around 15,000 years ago in Southeast Asia. Today, it's served globally as a staple diet and popular ingredient to 3.5 billion people. It would be difficult to imagine a world without video calls you use through your phone camera or laptop. The technology has helped game-changing innovations like working from home. Still, video calls' original purpose is far from how we use them today. The technology was introduced to confirm if the coffee was still in a pot. In 1993, researchers at the University of Cambridge found it frustrating when they took a break to get a cup of coffee, only to find that the pot was empty. So, they invented a device to monitor it and hooked up a camera that provided their computer with a live stream of the coffee pot. Thanks to these researchers, we can work in pajamas now. We know Albert Einstein for various achievements, but there's something he co-invented that goes overlooked. Together with his student, he invented a modified refrigerator. It's not like the ones we use today. In the 1920s, fridges weren't quite as safe as they produced poisonous gases. He wanted to create a safer version that didn't require electricity, without moving parts, and only needed a heat source to operate. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough funding, so the project dried up. Later, in the 1950s, electric fridges became popular. But in 2008, engineers from Oxford University revived this retro design. They're still working on it, but once they finish, the Einstein fridge will come in handy for rural areas without power and people who want to live off the grid. That random QWERTY design doesn't make things easier. In the 1870s, Christopher Scholz invented a layout that ensured typing was twice as fast. But with commonly used letters next to each other, it was a bit too fast, and the machines constantly jammed. So he then developed the QWERTY design. It forced typists to adopt a pecking style. This way, they would search for a letter and slowly type with their index fingers. The keyboards remain unchanged even today, and people all over the world have somehow adapted to them. The plastic end of your shoelace is an aglet, and people have used it since ancient Rome. Sure thing, they had no plastic back then, so those aglets were made of stone, glass, or even metal. Extra wealthy people could accessorize their shoes with precious metals, like brass or silver. What came first, the TV or the remote control? The technology that functions in the remote is older by several decades. In 1898, Nikola Tesla created a machine to control mechanical devices with radio waves. Initially, he tried selling the idea of a radio waves device operating I.O. through remote control boats, but the potential buyers were not interested. He was way ahead of his time, as remote controls were finally used with televisions in 1956. As engineer Percy Spencer initially invented something brilliant in 1945, he was working on a new vacuum tube, the Magnetron, which was used with early radar systems. While working on the project, he found that the chocolate in his pocket had melted. Realizing the heating potential of the Magnetron, he used it on corn kernels, which turned into popcorn. Then he tried testing it with eggs, but things got a bit messy. So once the yolk was washed away, he built a metal box, keeping the energy within, and the first microwave oven was built. In the airport, they usually ask you to take your laptop out of your backpack and put it in a separate bin while going through the security check. Laptops are dense, and the x-rays can't see through them, so you could be hiding something dangerous there. If it's out and it's on its own in a separate bin, it's easier for the scanners to capture a prospective hazard. Normally, the messages you send using iMessage are blue, but look, this time it turned green. No need to panic, it's not like the user blocked you or anything, it's just that you sent a regular SMS and not an iMessage. iMessages can only be sent to people who own an Apple device, so if the recipient doesn't have one, they're all gonna be green. Another reason your phone might opt for an SMS is that your iPhone isn't connected to the internet. 
iMessages go through the web, and SMS uses a cellular signal. The jacks you put in your devices have little plastic rings on them that separate different sections. These sections are called pins, and each of them serves a different purpose. Each plug will have at least one plastic ring because any plug must be separated into at least two pins. One of them is there to cancel out any interference, and the other to carry the signal. If, for example, your headphones have one ring and two sections, they have a mono playback. They deliver the same sound to both your right and your left ear. If there are two rings and three sections, then there is a basic one to cancel out interference and the other two for either ear. Three rings and four sections mean that you have a set, one basic, one for either of the ears, and the last one is the microphone pin. I bet you've never even noticed, but all credit cards, no matter what bank or country they come from, are the exact same size. The first ever credit card was issued in 1958 by the Bank of America. And later, the international standard was established for every issuer around the world to follow. The standard dictates both the proportions and the thickness. Whistles can work perfectly fine even if they don't have that ball inside, yet they all have it. That's because even though there's a sound without the ball, the noise it creates is very flat and not distinguishable enough. When you blow, the ball starts moving around inside, creating different pitches and making the noise more noticeable. Jeans have had those metal rivets ever since they were invented. Jacob Davis, the man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to those spots where the pants were more likely to rip to make them stronger. Today, they have more of a decorative purpose because they're distinctive and traditional for jeans. A basketball has little dots all over its surface, and they serve as friction points. It's important for that ball not to slip out of the hands. There were times when they played basketball with a soccer ball. The floor was very slippery, and it was impossible to play because you'd have to be very careful just to keep the ball in place. So, they had to redesign it. The more points of contact any object has with some surface, the more friction there is, and the less likely it is to slip on the surface. So, that's how the ball got its dots. Those holes at the end of the handles aren't just there for you to hang your pans easily. You can also place your cooking spoon in there while making a meal. It'll hang right above the pan, and the sauce won't spill around. Make sure to tap off the sauce or food beforehand, though, so that it doesn't go down the spoon's handle. You unload the dishwasher, and while everything is dry, your plastic containers get all wet once again. Seems like they never get dry, and that's actually true. The reason for it is the material. The dishes heat up and cool down slowly, so the remaining water evaporates and dries out easily. When you take out those plastic containers, they cool down way too fast, so the water doesn't dry out of the surface and just stays there. Another water source is those upside-down cups that collect water on top. But have you noticed that cups have chips on the bottom? They serve as a water drain in the dishwasher. So yeah, these cups don't accumulate water in the dishwasher. Take a look at aluminum foil. One side of it is always shiny, and the other one is dull. When producing the foil, they flatten it with rollers. It's so thin that the rollers tear it. So they take two layers at a time. So the sides facing the roller remain shiny. And those in the middle stay dull. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.